Hello there everyone. I know it's been more than the two weeks I estimated in the last video, but you know how I am with these Tap Titans 2 videos. Anyways, before I start going over the remaining artifacts I just wanna do some advertising for my clan. It's only in the top 500 so it may not be very appealing to those currently in a higher clan, but if you've made decent progress in the game, and are super keen on helping a clan climb, but is also looking around for one, feel free to join with the code and password on the side. Okay, now for what you've been waiting for. There are 18 remaining artifacts that I have to go over for this part too. Before that I must interrupt you again to give you an update on my artifacts. This time around I'm lazy and won't leave them up on the sidebars, but if you really wanna see my progress on everything then I will cycle through that as the video goes on, with more time spent hovering over the artifacts of course. So I have 30 artifacts now, 8 more artifacts to go and I'd say I'm having decent luck on them. However I'm still missing some pretty key artifacts like the Parchment of Foresight and Blade of Damocles so that sucks I guess. Speaking of the Blade of Damocles, how about we start the artifact analysis off with that. This thing increases all hero damage, which in turn means all damage, because almost everything relies on hero damage in this game. Hence I would put this artifact in the A tier, because it's cheap and boosts your damage better than similar artifacts that I'll mention later. Or should I say now? Heavenly Sword, this is something I do own. It's a multiplier to your all artifact damage, which again, is the same as all damage. I guess the developers just wanted to make it seem like these artifacts have different effects to your average player, lol. This one's a little behind Damocles on the tier list because the cost scales higher even though they both give the same boost per level. Then we have Divine Retribution, which is basically a poor man's heavenly sword because this thing gives straight up all damage however at a much lower bonus per level. For comparison, I'm following an artifact efficiency calculator at the moment and it's telling me to keep those two at the same level, where Divine Retribution is giving me a 190% damage bonus versus the Heavenly Swords 300 plus. And if I had Damocles, that bonus would be around 600%. So to recap, in order from best to worst, Damocles, Heavenly Sword, Divine Retribution, however by no means am I saying Divine Retribution is bad, in fact it's pretty good cause every bit of damage counts. Next, Fury's Bow. Absolutely tier 1, right on par with Damocles, if not better once you start relying purely on pet damage, right now it's giving me a 7x boost so it just barely edges out Damocles for those high stage pushes. Axe of Murder. This is listed as a tier 1, but I would like to claim otherwise. Not only does it have a max level cap which limits its effectiveness late game, but I really don't see this thing being that useful in the early game either cause all crit chance is useful for his pet damage, and 10% crit doesn't increase it by a whole ton. Sure it gives high artifact damage, which is nice but I wouldn't go so far as to rate it tier 1. Maybe tier 2 early game then dipping to tier 3 come late. Drunken Hammer. Oh boy what am I even supposed to say about this? Let's just say if you played Tap Titans 1, you might want to forget everything about it cause what may be good in that game may not be the case for this one. Drunken Hammer being a good example of it. Needless to say I almost committed seppuku when I got this monstrosity as my 29th artifact. Out of all 38 artifacts in the game I think it's safe to say Drunken Hammer ranks 38th. Moving on, we have the 4 equipment boosting amigos. The tier rankings on the screen are all accurate in my opinion, Helmet of Madness ranks a little behind because damage is more valuable than gold, which is what armor gives. Man, you'd think a helmet artifact should boost your helmet but no. Game logic says it'll boost your armor and a sword will strengthen your helmet. Back on topic though, consider the other three artifacts to be about a little bit better than Divine Retribution based on their multipliers. You'll want to keep all three the same level come late game as they all cost the same and give you the same bonus. 
Now for these two miscellaneous artifacts. Invader's Shield, it's an okay artifact, but you'll do just fine without it. Double fairies are simply a luxury, but it sucks there's a level cap, so that means just like the Axe of Murde, once you reach the max level it'll slowly become less and less useful in relative terms. Staff of Radiance cuts the cost of heroes up to a maximum of 50%, which simply put means double the gold at max level. Not bad, but not great either, as you could do better with other gold artifacts without a level cap. What a perfect time to mention gold, because these last six artifacts are all about it. Let's start with the best one by far first, Heroic Shield. Gives boss gold, and a fuck ton of it. It should be no surprise by now that bosses are 99% of your gold income, but with Heroic Shield that number becomes 99.9%. Again just for reference, right now I have Heroic Shield up to a 14 times multiplier for a whopping 14 times more gold than someone without it, and I can't stress how useful this artifact is, especially for breaking the level 2900 evolve wall. More on walls in a future episode. After Heroic Shield, the remaining gold focused artifacts are pretty average to shit tier. Book of Prophecy increases your all gold amount, so basically gold from bosses, titans and chestersons. Only boss gold is relevant though so essentially this is like a really really poor man's heroic shield. You get 25% more base boss gold per level with heroic shield, but with this one it's only 5%. Personally I don't have this artifact yet but it's whatever, it ain't necessary, but it's still pretty decent. Better than Helmet of Madness at least. Divine Chalice, increased 10x gold chance up to a maximum of 50%. Don't let the tier 5 label fool you, while it may be too expensive to level up early game, the bonuses it gives is pretty good, at least good enough to not put it as tier 5 in the late game. Think of a 50% chance at 10 times the gold as 5.5 times more gold overall except just a wee bit RNG based. I'd put it up tier 3 right behind Book of Prophecy. Stone of the Volruns. I don't have it yet but I'm inclined to say it sucks now that I have Heroic Shield, however I've read a few Reddit posts on the subject of this artifact, trying to make a case for it being useful. But I do believe it is useless once you have Heroic Shield. Not sure about without Heroic Shield, but I'm sure those in that situation will find some use out of it. Same goes with Chest of Contentment and Egg of Fortune. If you don't have Heroic Shield then it's very possible you can get your main income off Chestersons. But Chestersons are really ass in this game, so you'll need a giant chest multiplier to pull it off. And that is a wrap folks. I may have went a little too fast and I apologize if that was the case. But you kind of have to go fast if you wanna cover 38 artifacts in 2 videos. Honestly just read Reddit or make a post if you need help on artifacts rather than watching a video about it, but if you're too lazy to do that then hopefully you learned something from watching it already. Remember if you're stage 1400 plus that I'm open to recruit any active members for my clan, help in killing the clan boss is much appreciated. Next TT2 video will probably be on the skill tree so wait a couple of weeks for that. Or months, Kappa. Have a heroic day.